This is why people take Addy. The perspective is that like, oh, I feel good. I feel focused. I only took it one time and it was a very, very, very small amount. Everyone knew like you probably shouldn't be taking massive amounts of Adderall out of land, but people were doing it. Ark was quoted saying, if you are not taking Adderall, then you are putting yourself at an intentional disadvantage. For years, Adderall has been a touchy subject in esports. For those unfamiliar with the drug, Adderall is a stimulant designed to give your focus, energy levels, and other important things a boost. Which is why, despite being a prescription medication for ADHD, Adderall has also developed a reputation as a sort of miracle pill that will make you a gamer god. Who tries to get a guess? It's aggressive, but who uh, attaches? Keeps going, but who hits it? It was pretty obvious, like, if you listen to the comms. But there are a ton of questions surrounding its use. Do pros really use Adderall to win tournaments? Are they putting their health at risk by doing so? And most importantly, does it even work? You're always looking for an edge on somebody else. They think, all right, I'll give it a try. You don't need it. Before we get into the video, we wanted to note that drug abuse is a serious issue. So if you or someone you know is struggling with drugs or other issues related to drugs, there is help available for you near where you live. You can also call the American Addiction Center's hotline at 888-985-2217. Okay, so people have been trying to use performance enhancing substances to get an edge over their opponents for literally as long as competitions have existed. But once we as a society came up with ways to test for these things, we really began cracking down on that shit. Whatever instances of doping were uncovered in traditional sports have received considerable media attention. But esports are a lot younger, and our drug scandals don't get talked about very often. So drugs have been a bit of a gray area. One very important question was, what even constitutes a performance enhancing substance in the context of esports? Esports are primarily mental, not physical. So something like steroids would be useless. And while things like caffeine or marijuana, for example, can alter your mental state, it's not like chugging a Red Bull is gonna turn you into an esports superstar. But in their quest to find a more esports friendly leg up, some pros have turned to Adderall, which has long had a reputation for off-label use as a mental stimulant. That's, I think, why kind of Adderall is the go-to because it's very explicitly a pharmaceutical. It's very explicitly something you intake and it has this long storied history or tradition of being used kind of covertly um, and without prescription for, for other pursuits that are largely cognitive. Obviously the idea that Adderall was some sort of esports magic bullet didn't take root overnight. Whispers of gamers using certain substances to outdo the competition have been going around at least as far back as 2010, posted on forums or passed around through word of mouth. The issue got a few mentions in the press now and again, but there were just too many stakeholders interested in keeping things under wraps. I mean, I see people say this about the Olympics too, like let people like, take all the drugs they want and let's see what the true limits of human performance are, right? Let's see what happens. You see that all the way through to people being like, no, not even prescription drugs, right? So you see this wild uh, continuance of opinions. Like you notice this hush-hush attitudes, this let's not talk about this. It's honestly a lot of um, people who could talk about this, this could uh, be hugely detrimental to their careers, right? So this is one of the, the obstacles into kind of getting to the bottom of this as well. But in 2015, esports fans finally learned the truth. The ESL comms were kind of funny, in my opinion. I don't even care. We were all on Adderall. Like, well, I, don't, I don't even give a f Like, it was pretty obvious, like, if you listen to the comms. She's pulling that banana. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Is he holding banana? One spawn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dead, 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 dead. Come here, 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 come 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 I don't know, people can hate it or whatever. Everyone, everyone does Adderall at ESA land, right? Yeah. So throwing that out there for the fans. Take it good. Sumphus's revelation was a true watershed moment for PEDs in esports. He was taking a big risk by saying what he said on camera, because the reality is that there was, and still is, a huge stigma around the use of Adderall in competitive games. People view it as a performance enhancer, which means anyone using Adderall is basically willfully cheating. 
a cardinal sin in esports, and something that could ruin anyone's career. And now, the powers that be were forced to confront an ugly reality. Winners did do drugs. And with that information out in the open, where everybody could see it, they were forced to finally do something about it. First, ESL partnered with Nacionale Anti-Doping Agentur and the World Anti-Doping Agency, or the kind of fun to say NADA and WADA for short, and made a list of substances that were off-limits for pro players taking part in their online and offline tournaments. So what did this drug crackdown look like in practice exactly? Well, ESL One Cologne 2015 was the first tournament to feature what was supposed to be drug testing tailored to esports. Authorized reps administered random skin tests to players before their matches, but eventually swapped over to saliva sample testing for future events. But there was a problem. Basically, no one had ever put serious anti-doping measures into place in esports before, so no one knew what the proper protocols were. Should all drugs that kind of hinder your your psyche be banned, or should just they should pick and choose? Now, esports can't just half-ass it if they're gonna try to do it. They have to have a full-blown thing for it, you know what I mean? And the full-blown thing wasn't too far behind ESL's first anti-doping tournament. The Esports Integrity Commission, or ESIC, was established in 2015 to make sure pros were keeping it clean all across the board. We started building this program by understanding from the athletes themselves, from the players, what are the substances they're most concerned about? What are the techniques of doping that most concern them? What is it we can do to help improve your anti-doping program? Because it's about you not having to face anybody else cheating. So after all these rules, regulations, and organizations were put in place to oversee controlled substances in esports, Surely, everyone who's ever tried to dope their way to victory instantly flushed their entire stash of whatever and the story was over, right? Well, no, of course not. In the years that followed, people began outing themselves, others, and everything in between. It turns out players in every eSport allegedly used Adderall. I only took it one time and it was a very, very, very small amount. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing this probably, right? Like everyone knew like yeah. you probably shouldn't be taking massive amounts of Adderall out of land, but people were doing it. And it's, I don't really care if it's legal or it's not. There just needs to be a rule, just so I know at least like what I'm allowed to do. There's probably like 20 players who use Adderall or so in the league. And if, if imagine if, it was illegal. It was illegal to completely coming. use. Ark was quoted saying, if you are not taking Adderall, then you are putting yourself at an intentional disadvantage, which is like, well then, is everybody taking it? While efforts to curb esports doping continued, the topic resurfaced in a big way in 2021, after Call of Duty World Champion Hook posted a tell-all, describing his struggles with Adderall use before and during his team's 2020 COD Worlds win. You know, we got the win. I felt good about that. But you know, those couple days afterwards, I didn't feel good. And it was mainly because of one thing. I, at the time, was taking Adderall. I first took Adderall when I was like 18, 19, and um, you know, I realized basically that night what it was doing to me. This is very uncomfortable for me to talk about. It, was no, it wasn't doing anything good for me. And I realized that that night because I won that event with Adderall and just that feeling afterwards was like, you know, it wasn't that great. It wasn't that great of a feeling. Semphis might have already opened this can of worms back in 2015, but Hook's candid admission of how the drug affected him personally added a whole new level of gravitas to the issue. I was playing out of anger rather than joy. That was like the biggest realization. I was like, okay, like, you know, why I started playing the first game was because I love the game. I don't want to play out of anger. I saw even what it was doing to my personality over time. Like I was becoming more angry to the people I love and even sometimes sad. And I didn't like that. Now, I know this has been a lot, but I'm sure that you still want the answer to the question that we asked at the beginning of this video. Can PEDs make you a better player? After all, Hook did win a world championship on Adderall, and all of these other pros are saying the stuff's everywhere. So, is this how you get good? 
Well, I could investigate that claim myself, but it's probably better if we get the facts from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. There are some studies that do show some benefits with things like working memory or within our executive function. There are also studies that show that it's either null or potentially harmful. And specifically for those studies, they were in healthy populations, which a lot of the times, those are the people that we care about, right? Because those are the people that we're working with that are interested in, hey, I want to take something that might potentially help me. I'm considered healthy. I don't have this diagnosis of ADHD. Adderall is going to make me better. Currently, I don't believe there's any scientific data to support that Adderall is a performance enhancing drug in the context of esports. It just kind of became this conventional wisdom that, well, of course, if you see these benefits in study um, and in other activities, then you'll see these benefits in esports as well. And in case the science isn't proof enough, the players pretty much feel the same way. But I don't think it helps everybody though. Like, I don't think it'll like make some like average player like insane. For all the public players, <laughs> that think that you're gonna take Adderall, you're gonna take some sort of substance and become better, become global elite, get your Artibus up, you're bad and you need to get better because no player is taking Adderall and instantly becoming a pro. No one has ever been average, started taking Adderall and then suddenly they're good as now. Less likely to choke, you're probably more likely to choke. So instant God level gaming prowess aside, what specific benefits do players look for when taking Adderall to compete? Studies have shown that both people with ADHD and non-affected individuals can expect to see an improvement in their ability to focus and pay attention to what they're doing for extended periods of time if they take Adderall or another stimulant. But the very same studies admit that the actual scientific data on the subject is limited. And there is literally no major medical research based around the drug's effects on esports or gaming performance in particular. That focus and attention thing, for example, doesn't really work the way you'd expect. The focus part, I guess, is what people are like thinking it makes it like when you focus that you're going to be some smart, really smart, crazy player who sees the game in a different way. I don't know. It didn't really do much for me. Like I could focus a little bit better in the sense that yeah. I was I was studying demos at the time and it helped me keep I my attention on the demo and nothing else. I didn't like side track on yeah. anything it like it, it felt very very normal and the perspective is that like oh i feel good um i feel focused i but really nothing is like your gameplay is not really changing what's more the very same intended benefits of adderall can make you perform worse even if you actually need it and doubly so if you don't essentially it's a stimulant to match our energy levels and our mind patterns for those of us who have it i'm not gonna go too scientific i don't i'm not a doctor i don't know what all i said that last week too uh but for others it's an overdose and it puts you over the top so it's yeah there's a misconception there yeah i mean i feel like in any professional setting you're always looking for an edge on somebody else. And I think some players, because they have, you know, peers that do it or colleagues that do it, they think, all right, I'll give it a try. You don't need it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the best example because everybody questions my level of talent. But guess what? I got f***ing eight major championships. Not one of them was one with Adderall in my system. So yeah. you do not need it. I kind of proved to myself this year that you don't need it. Um, this is just me. I'm not advise anything but there are healthy alternatives and there is better ways to go about things and there is positive ways to you know help yourself um and compete you know probably better than ever so the general consensus seems to be that it won't be adderall or any other performance enhancing drug that takes your play to the next level that's on you but then why do we even bother with testing for or banning something that doesn't live up to its reputation. Given everything we've just heard, can we even call Adderall a performance enhancing drug? And if not, is all the hubbub and the infrastructure around eliminating it from pro play justified? We found the same that in our, in our research that there was this widespread assumption that, you know, of course the use of performance enhancers are dominant in esports and of course these uh, esports players are using this en masse. Whether or not that's true, I suppose there's also like a bias towards assuming that people who are better than you by magnitudes will obviously be getting some outside help, right? There's some kind of, you know, needing to justify why you're not in the pro leagues as well there going on. So I'm sure there's 
some cognitive biases that are informing that. So where does that leave us? Esports as a whole have barely even scratched the surface when it comes to finding out what can give some players an unfair advantage over others. But the real issue is that we refuse to talk about it. Instead, we continue shaming pros into silence that only exacerbates the problem, lures more young players into taking Adderall, and restricts access to those who use it as intended. And honestly, we need to do a ton more legitimate research to find out if it even needs to be banned at all. Adderall has been the boogeyman of esports for years. But, as it turns out, we might not understand it as well as we think we do.